Good morning, everybody. I am Gabriel Sear, the PEC product analyst for Edify. Today, we'll be uh, presenting uh, advanced analysis tools to increase confidence in PEC inspections. Uh, so I hope you've got your coffee. Uh, I've got my Texas mug here. Uh, and we just want to let you know that this session is recorded, so you will be able to listen to it later if you miss it. My colleague, uh, we'll be collecting questions and we'll answer all of your questions at the end. But feel free to ask a question in the chat at any point during the presentation. We'll make sure to answer all of them at the end of the presentation. Uh, so we'll be able to start the presentation right now. As I said, advanced analysis in pulse to current data to increase inspection confidence is our topic today. I'll just start the presentation. Um, in our agenda for today, we'll discuss uh, a quick uh, history of the pulse cytokrine technique. We'll discuss the importance of context in pulse cytokrine inspection, present some new analysis tool, the TAU scan, which was released last year, and the PERM tool, a new tool to make the difference between real indications and false positives in pulse cytokrine data. Uh, and we'll conclude on the benefits of advanced analysis in back inspections. Quick back history. So pulse to the current is an advanced electromagnetic technique. Although it shares part of its name with conventional eddy currents, the working principles are very different. We use a magnetic pulse to magnetize the bulk of a carbon steel or cast iron component. And we'll listen to the decay of the decurrence to measure the remaining wall thickness. So instead of finding cracks like conventional decurrence or small defects, we're looking for large generalized corrosion defects hidden under layers of typically insulation or fireproofing. Uh, so it's why the technique was used uh, since the 1980s as a screening tool for CUI, CUF. You can use spec to find areas of interest and then strip only locally the insulation or the fireproofing to confirm the calls. So it's a very nice screening tool that saves a lot of cost in surface preparation, insulation removal. Uh, so instead of scanning, say, instead of inspecting 100 yards of piping and stripping the insulation, you can scan through the insulation, find a single area where you've got damage and strip only locally the insulation. So a lot of benefits to PEC. Uh, the technology was used uh, pretty much similarly through the 80s, uh, from the 80s till the mid 2010s. And then Edify launched in 2016 the Lift, our own implementation of a pulse to the current. This was the first PEC system on the market with dynamic scanning, which means that instead of a grid mode where you take point by point measurement, we are able to use an encoder to trig the acquisition cycle and just scan at a nearly constant speed on the surface, which dramatically increased productivity. Uh, we also introduced a compensated wall thickness, a tool that will extract the, the contribution from a defect to uh, minimize the uh, undersizing effect of small flaws. It is uh, intrinsic to pulse to the current. Then in 2018, we introduced the pulse to the current array probe, the first PECA probe on the market. Uh, so with six simultaneous uh, channels, it's possible to, again, increase five to tenfold productivity over traditional PEC inspection with mono element or single channel probes, if you'd like. Uh, so again, PEC gained more traction, more adoption in the market. And uh, actually now there are over 300 lift systems in the field. Uh, and then we focused on advanced analysis in the last two years. We introduced the TAU scan in 2020, which we'll discuss here, as well as the PERM tool in 2021, which is going to be the main focus of this presentation. We'll discuss the importance of PEC in, uh, sorry, of context in PEC inspections. Um, so pulse to the current is sensitive to three parameters. The wall thickness of the component we're inspecting, the conductivity of the component and the permeability of the component. For a traditional PEC inspection, it is assumed that permeability and conductivity are constant throughout the component, which is true most of the times. In some cases, there are variations of conductivity, permeability, or interfering components that will affect the PEC signals. And this is why it's important to look at the context surrounding the PEC inspection. 
So you've got three information available to the user. You've got the C scan, so that's your corrosion mapping, your map of the PEC data, the signals, the individual A scans that constitute the pixels in your in your C scan, as well as the context. And by context, we mean the as built drawing, the history of the asset. If there are documents uh, that document the repairs that have been done over time, the pictures that might have been taken in the fields and the notes from the technicians or their uh, general feeling or, or feedback on, on the inspection. Uh, and so if you're scanning, say, a pipe, and then there is another pipe right above it that's uh, you know coming perpendicular, and right underneath this area, you see an effect on the PEC signals. And if you've got pictures or an understanding of the context, you know that it's that surrounding component that's affecting the PEC signal. Same thing as if you go with scan up against a flange or something like that. So it's really important to have access to the drawings, the asset history, and that helps uh, get a better understanding of what's going on in the signal when you've got uh, feedback or changes that are induced by something else than uh, just wall loss or wall thickness variations. One of the tools that we developed to, you know, help the users get a better understanding of what's going on in the PEG data, get better confidence in their inspections, is the Tau scan. Uh, so this is a tool we introduced with Lyft uh, 2.3 last year in 2020. Uh, the Tau scan is just a different representation of the A scan. So it's basically the same information. You get one Tau scan for each A scan in the signals. And the tau scan is one on a uh, minus one, sorry, on the derivative of the log of the A scan signals. So it's just a different representation that better highlights uh, some relevant information of the A scan uh, signal. There are three parts to the tau scan or to the A scan. So there's first in blue an infinite wall region. So you see that the slope is constant within that region. That provides information on uh, the material uh, that you're inspecting, if it's cast iron or carbon steel, as well as the weather jacket. Then there's the bending region here, the second region of the tau scan that provides information on flaw depth, as well as the size of the flaw relative to the probe's averaging area or footprint. And then there's a plateau region that's characterized by an exponential decay. So that's the nearly constant slope that you'll see in our A scan representation. That provides information on the thickness of the material, the validity of the setup, the presence of mass effects, noise, uh, things like that. So the infinite wall region, uh, this is the first part of the A scan, and that's going to provide you information on the weather jacket as well as the material. Uh, what we mean by the effect that the weather jacket is going to have is that typically aluminum, for example, is going to introduce a, de um, a delay in the signal. So you'll, if you introduce an aluminum weather jacket over a component that didn't have one, you'll see that whole tau scan curve shift to the right. So the shape of the A scan curve is going to be similar. You might see some effect right at the beginning. That's going to be early in time. Most importantly, you get the shift to the right. And typically, you'll get one and a half milliseconds of delay per half millimeter or 20 thousandths of an inch of aluminum. Stainless steel is going to have very little effect. It's not going to introduce a delay typically. And galvanized steel or carbon steel uh, weather jackets are going to introduce some delay. The slope of the curve indicates the material. Uh, so we have two algorithms within the lift system. One that considers a slope of 1.6 for steel, 1.7 for cast iron. So this is what you're seeing here. So that slope that we're referring to with a kind of a reference dashed line here uh, is characteristic of the material. And if you're scanning the wrong material with a steel setup on, car, on cast iron, for example, uh, you'll see that slope um, have a different angle. This part also helps identify weather jacket errors. So if you're scanning over a component that's thought to have an aluminum weather jacket, but you have no measurement delay or no calibration delay, then you know that the definition of the component is perhaps wrong. Uh, same thing for jacket overlaps. So if you've got 
half a millimeter of aluminum, one and a half milliseconds of signal delay. Then if you scan over an area with a jacket overlap, you're probably going to have around three milliseconds of uh, jacket delay. The bending region of the tau scan, so that's the middle part of our tau scan, that contains information on the defect depth as well as its size. So if you've got a smaller indication like this one here, you'll see the signal curve in black leave the calibration curve earlier on. And that's because in that tau scan, there is information from two different wall thickness. You get a plateau region that's uh, defined by the defect. So that's the characteristic decay time of the defect. And then you've got another plateau that would come up later that corresponds to the surrounding nominal wall thickness. Whereas if you're scanning an area of generalized wall loss, larger than the probe averaging area, the bending point is going to be later in time. So the, the curve is going to leave later and end with uh, just one plateau. The third part of the A scan is the plateau. Uh, there's many use cases. We're not going to go into too much details in all of them. We don't have that much time today, but that's going to provide you information on defect size. As I said, on defects larger than the probe averaging area, you're going to get a single plateau. That corresponds more or less to the CDT. So the value in milliseconds is going to correspond to the CDT. In this case, we would have just a little bit over six milliseconds CDT. You'll get information on noise. If there is uh, electromagnetic noise or vibration, this is a good case here with significant noise affecting the tau scan calibration curve. Uh, scab effect is also going to affect uh, this region, the setup quality. If you see the tau scan, especially the calibration tau scan, and before 3CDT, uh, that means that the A scan window is too short. That would happen typically if you do your smart pulse and then recalibrate on existing areas with a thicker wall thickness, then uh, you'll see that uh, tau scan calibration get under 3 CDT. Typically, we recommend recalibrating, redoing a smart pulse in those cases. You, you want your uh, tau scan to last between 3 and 4 CDT, especially for the calibration. Now we'll go into uh, the core of our presentation, which is the PERM tool. Uh, the name comes from permeability, basically. Uh, the PERM tool was uh, initially developed to identify permeability variations that would potentially lead to false positives. Although the tool has many more uses and we'll discuss some use cases and present examples during this portion of the presentation. Uh, so it's a new data representation, a new view that's available in LEAF 2.4. Again, we're using information that's already existing in the A scan and the C scan. So this is a tool that's applicable to older data. So that's a nice thing. You can revisit older data with the new tool. Uh, the task scan is, uh, and the PERM tool are not meant to be used individually. They're you know part of a suite of advanced analysis tools against uh, amongst others, including the, the CWT. Uh, so we're really building a platform in LiftPro where you have all these advanced analysis tools and you can increase your understanding of what's going on in the PEC data and get better inspection confidence. Uh, and this new tool, the PERM tool, is only available in LiftPro. So the tau scan, we've got the calibration tau scan on the Lift Go unit so that if you're in the field, you have the wrong weather jacket material you see the calibration delay, you see the calibration tau scan, and you can uh, see those issues in the field, change the component definition, recalibrate accordingly, and then you've got the signal tau scan in LiftPro. But for the PERM tool, it's only available in LiftPro. And we're going to load uh, this layout with the PERM tool as soon as you open data in LiftPro 2.4 R16 and later. The use of the PERM tool or the the really the, the key benefit and the key breakthrough with that tool is that it enables users, technicians, spec uh, data analysts to make the difference between a real defect and a false positive. So over time, uh, PEC has been prone to false positive in some cases with experience, you can manage them most of the time, uh, but uh, it's not always that intuitive. So we built a very intuitive tool 
that will show a different signature when you're putting your cursor over a real indication with wall loss as compared to a false positive like this one. This is suspected to be a hard spot, so that was a bare pipe, no insulation, no wall loss measured with UT, but when you scan with PAC, and you could get the same thing with different electromagnetic technique, you're seeing a change in properties, so there's a change in conductivity or permeability that's affecting the PEC sizing. But with the PERM tool, uh, we're showing a different signature. Um, so uh, false positive are often associated with a combination of two factors. And that's something we've noted through our R&D process. Uh, so we've seen that uh, here we've got a case of residual magnetization that as you move your cursor, and perhaps it's difficult for you to see on screen, as you move your cursor over uh, an area where there's no actual wall loss, but there's change in magnetic properties that affect the wall thickness measurements from PEC, you see an increase in signal amplitude that's correlated with a faster decay of the A scan. So in most cases, that's gonna be characterized by this crossing of the A scan. So it's an extreme example, but you see higher signal amplitude at the beginning of the A scan, and then a faster decay. So we built a tool that's gonna combine those two informations in one signal amplitude, as well as uh, the wall thickness variations. So the PERM tool is a local tool. It's not a filter or something that's gonna eliminate a false positive entirely but it's a tool where you can put your cursor over an indication and apply the tool on one of the two axes. By default, the tool is gonna to be applied to the scan axis where you have the highest resolution typically. And we're gonna draw a point for every single um, pixel in that C scan for every single A scan basically. Uh, and this tool is gonna to highlight localized variation. So it's not absolute wall thickness variations or uh, absolute signal amplitude compared to the calibration, but it's really localized to the cursor position. Uh, there's different components to that perm tool. So we've got a signal trace. We'll get a point for every single A scan as we mentioned. And then we're tracing a vector. So there's gonna be a blue arrow that's pointing to the point of lowest wall thickness measurement within the cursor. Typically, you're looking at an indication, so interested in where there is the most wall loss, and you want that uh, signal curve and the vector to have similar shapes to match, basically, for the tool uh, to be used accurately. We'll put a, a, a dot around the point where the, the cursor is centered and an X if there is warning present in uh, the, the within the, the signal trace. Um, and then there are different zones of the uh, the perm tool. So depending on where the trace and the cursor are pointing, we're either seeing a true wall loss indication. So that's gonna be typically a vector or trace going straight down or slightly to the left if there's it's a near side defect. You'll go into the in uncertainty area if the defect has a, a signature that is similar to that of uh, a real indication or um, uh, false positive and pointing into the false positive area if it's uh, typical of a false positive indication. We've got this undefined area. So because we're pointing to the point of lowest wall thickness measurements locally, uh, the vector is never gonna point into that area. If the trace goes into there, then it's not characteristic of either a defect or a false positive. It's something else going on. Uh, the tool is not a silver bullet, it works on many uh, use cases of false positive, but not all of them. Uh, so it's gonna work for most cases of interfering components that could be rebars inside concrete fireproofing, uh, pipe supports, uh, studs in fireproofing, uh, a surrounding com a component that's surrounding the one you're inspecting and that's affecting the PEC signals. Uh, it works uh, well, an heat affected zone and localized magnetic property variations, including residual magnetization. It does not work well on temperature gradients, but the standards require you to inspect only components where you've got less than 20 Celsius gradient between the calibration and inspection area. And it's not going to work on pill signature, but we'll go over all of those examples very quickly now. 
Uh, so we've got a pressure vessel here. The technician scanned in between the pressure vessel and the ladder. They thought that there was wall loss in that region, but actually what we were seeing is the interference from the ladder on the PEC signals. So when you apply the PEC tool to say this area here that looks like a localized area of, of more significant corrosion, you're seeing that the perm tool is pointing into that gray zone. That's a false positive. And you can see here actually the shape of the ladder. So, you know, you've got visual cues within the C-scan using the context, you can understand that there's something going on. But the perm tool is going to confirm you that this is indeed a false positive. Here we've got, um, um, this is uh, basically an elbow where we scanned also uh, 30 centimeters, one foot on either end of the elbow on the straight sections. We've got the heat affected zone from the weld here. So this one is affecting this kind of hourglass shape is affecting the pec sizing, but the perm tool confirms that this is indeed a false positive. Where we put the cursor on this generalized corrosion defect here just on the left, we see that this uh, is indeed identified as a real indication. Residual magnetization on, uh, this is a plate that was scanned by an MFL floor scanner. Basically, it's leaving very strong residual magnetization. 30 Gauss measured at the surface of the component, but the perm tool identifies those area of magnetization as a false positive. We've got here a defect that's actual wall loss uh, and here the tool again is going to identify that as a real indication. Temperature gradients are not very well identified. So here we've got an example. We have a nominal plate, no wall loss. If we apply the perm tool here, you see the signal is just kind of gibberish. So there's no significant change in amplitude or uh, changes in wall thickness. So we've got just kind of this very localized gibberish in the, the perm tool, nothing to look at, nothing interesting. We heated the center of this plate with uh, just a, you know, a heating element. And we're able to generate a temperature gradient of about 50 Celsius between the ends and the center close to 100 Fahrenheit. And we introduced a change in wall thickness measurements in the PEC signals of about 10%. And this uh, does look like a real indication. So the tool is not able to identify or differentiate uh, temperature gradients from actual indications. So that's one of the limitations of the tool. Pilger signature, that helix pattern that you see here on the pipe, it's not so common on the field, especially in, on refineries, because the pipes are thermally and mechanically cycled over time. And that does kind of a, a, an healing process on the pipes. And that takes off the, the cold work marks or localized change in magnetic properties that were induced during the manufacturing process of the pipe that can affect the PEC signal. So you see that more often on pipes that are not very hot or not under high pressure or quite new especially in manufactured samples. So the tool is not able to differentiate that from a defect. But when you look at a real indication such as this one, then the real indications within the Pelger signature are also well identified as defects. So it's a case where you need to look for asymmetries in the C-scan to find defects. Uh, areas where you've got more wall loss or the wall loss is standing out from the pattern of the Pilgering signature. So we presented today different advanced analysis tools for PEC. We mentioned the importance of the context, what the tau scan can do, help you identify indications that are smaller than the averaging area or larger than the averaging area, uh, identify errors in the calibration. We discussed the PERM tool that's going to make the difference between a real indication and a false positive in most cases. And these tools are going to help you increase the confidence that you have in the PEC inspections that you carry and that the asset owners have in the inspection results after they get an inspection carried on, on one of their assets. And that's going to you know, increase PEC usage in the field. Uh, more and more people want to use PEC in their COI programs. We're building the tools so that they have the confidence that the results that they get are 
indeed accurate in that when you call a defect, you strip the installation, you're actually finding an indication. And we do that by minimizing the risk of false positive. The perm tool is only available in Lyft Pro 2.4, as we mentioned earlier. So you cannot just uh, use it on the Lyft Go software. But if you have a Lyft Pro license, you can use it right away. If you don't, there's a free trial, a free 14-day trial of Lyft Pro. If you go on our uh, website and look for the page where you download the Lyft Go and Lyft Pro software, you can just download Lyft Pro and activate the temporary license. That's our trial for Lyft Pro. And use it for 14 days and you have access to all the uh, functionalities uh, or you could just contact your edify representative and we'll be glad to provide you the instructions to install the lift pro trial and now we're ready to take questions uh, so i'm waiting for that so yes yeah, someone is asking i don't have a lift pro license can i try the perm Tool. So yes, as we said, uh, there's a, a trial. So you'll need to go on our website. You can go into resources, software, and then Lyft. Uh, and then you're going to have access to Lyft Go and Lyft Pro. You really need to use the latest version, 2.4 R16. And then you don't need to contact us necessarily. You can just click Request Temporary License. You put in your contact information, the serial number of your Lyft, and you're going to have access to all the functionalities for, for 14 days. So someone is asking, does the perm tool work with mono element probe? That's a very good question. So most of the data we've seen today was from array probes, uh, but it actually does work with uh, single element probes. So whether they are G1 probes or G2, uh, it's going to work. What you have to take into consideration is that uh, you need to use uh, the latest uh, algorithm to use the tool. So when you get into Lift Pro, you just have to go to Setup, Sizing Algorithm. You select the latest one, which is the same for 2.2, 2.3, and 2.4. Once you've done that, the tool is going to work for monodement probes uh, as well as array probes. So you can revisit all their data. So yeah, someone uh, is asking uh, if you can use the perm tool on uh, older data from a few years ago. Uh, so the only version where it's not going to work is if the data was acquired in Lyft 1.0. So the very first version we released in 2016, we had a different setup, different A-scan configuration. So that would not work. But anything uh, acquired with Lyft 1.1, so about 2017 and up, you can use the latest algorithm and use the perm tool on that. So you can revisit older data and see if you know if you made a false call in the past, you can revisit that and have the confidence that you'll be able to identify it next time. So someone is asking if they can use uh, the perm tool and the field and the lift. So uh, no, uh, unfortunately, it's really just for Lift Pro. So we really want to bring the analyst or the users, the technician, on their laptop or on a desktop, the com computer looking at Lift Pro where they have access to the tau scan as well as the perm tool, so all of the advanced analysis tools. And this is where you'll get the best results. So if you're in the field and you're scanning something and you're seeing an indication, you're worrying, is that potentially a false positive? If you have the opportunity to do it, what we recommend is you can do a higher resolution scan of that area right away. And once you get into the office, you'll be able to use the perm tool and the best possible data quality and get the most accurate answer as whether or not it is a real indication. So someone is asking, is the perm tool a point by pointing or should I use the an area to get the perm tool curves? So it's not a point by point tool. So the, the perm tool does not apply to a single point. It applies to a line, if you wish. So we, we've shown that we were applying the cursor. So the perm tool is either going to apply to the whole X axis length of your cursor or the Y axis. Typically, we use the scanning axis as a reference. So if you're scanning from left to right on the X axis, we're going to apply the perm tool on the X axis by default. Vice versa if you're scanning vertically. But there is a little button on the bottom left portion of the of the uh, uh, top, uh, I'm sorry, of the perm tool window, and you can index or change between X and Y axis. So if you're on a challenging case or something like that, or you've got also a lift of variation, 
We can change the orientation of the perm tool and get it in the other direction as well. So someone is asking, can the perm tool be used to detect carburization levels in a fire eater cracker? It's a very good question. It is not something uh, that we have tested, uh, but I'd be glad to, to try it. So we're seeing anything that would affect conductivity or permeability variation. So I don't know if these parameters are affected by the carburization levels. If they are, potentially we're going to see a signature, but uh, we would need to test it and we have to understand that it is not exactly what the tool has been built for. So I cannot uh, tell right away what would be the behavior of the perm tool and these uh, components. So someone is asking uh, where you can get training for the tool. Uh, the perm tool is part of the latest version of the, uh, the training or it's available with the latest version of the PEC training, but we understand that not everybody is going through training right now. Uh, so what we did is until the end of this year, anybody that got trained on the lift in the past that had an access to the e-learning platform, the Edify Academy, if you wish, uh, you can just go on there. And even if your credentials are expired for the PEC training, you'll get access for free to the dedicated module to the PERM tool. So you'll have access to that relatively short course, less than an hour. You'll be able to understand the basics or in Lift Pro, you can click on the small uh, question mark on the tau scan, um, uh, on the tau scan, sorry, on the tau scan, but the perm tool view, and you'll be able to have access to a cheat sheet or a fact sheet where you've got the basic details and the operation of the tools. Where could I, okay, sorry. So I think this concludes the questions. You can email me directly at gcyr at edify.com if you've got questions or contact your edify representative and we can set a session with you, go into more details, revisit challenging data from previous inspections and, and discuss these new tools with you and the opportunities for, for your team.